This is Andy Porawal for Boxing Social in association with Betfred, and I'm delighted to be joined by Danny Quartermain over Zoom. Danny, firstly, how are you? Yeah, all good, mate. Good morning to you. Good morning to you too. Um, Happy New Year as well. I hope you had a good one, a good Christmas. Did you get up to much? No, it was nice for that one, too fair. Um, there's a few things that we were getting under our belt, um, ready for the new year. Um, but it was nice just to have a nice relaxing Christmas fair new year. Um, get a nice bit of rest and recovery, guys. It's good to hear, mate. Um, just before we come on to what could be coming up for yourself, just to reflect on your 2021 free wins, uh, all by points. How do you assess it now? You've got a chance to look back. Yeah, I mean, um, obviously boxers started back up September, so there's a bit of a mad rush. Lots of shows going on, um, and I was glad, gladly been able to fight on three shows before the, uh, the new year. Um, so I had three in three months, which is quite busy to be fair. But um, no, it was, it was a good opportunity. Um, almost tried to play catch up from the year before, obviously with COVID. Um, so yeah, I've got four fights, four wins now. Um, all, I've won every round so far. Um, so yeah, pushing on for a bigger year next, this year. That's something I was going to ask you. Obviously making your debut a month before lockdowns first began back in 2020, uh, did you feel a pressure to kind of make up for lost time when you when you was able to get back out for the first time since the pandemic began at the end of last year? Yeah, it's more frustrating than anything. Um, having started this new journey as a professional, um, had my first fight, uh, had a second fight lined up for the March and a week before it gets cancelled. Um, so that, there wasn't so much a pressure to get lots of fights in, but I almost wanted to. Um, Obviously, I want to build my, my career. I want to build my experience in the pro ranks. So getting the fights in my belt is going to do that for me. So talk to about the plans moving into 2021. Um, obviously, you've recently been competing at lightweight, but I know that's not your, your the weight which you see yourself competing at as your career progresses. So what's the plans for 2022? So yeah, 2022, um, as we just started, um, Luckily enough, I'll be able to say I'm, I can now become a full-time athlete. So I've just gone full-time, which has opened so many more doors for me. Um, and you're going to see a bigger and better myself than me. Um, I'm known for my engine in my amateur boxing. Um, that's just over three threes. So going into the pro game, with I've had three fights with four-rounders and I've had a six-rounder. In fact, the six-rounder was probably better for me. Um, I was able to express and show a lot more about my boxing style, my engine, that, I think the longer fights, the, the six and eight rounders, which are going to come this year, um, you're going to see a bigger and better start, that, that is Danny Court, man. So talk to me, you know, you just said the six and the eight rounders will be more beneficial for yourself. Uh, why is that? Because you know, some people prefer just a shorter, a shorter rounds, uh, not shorter rounds, sorry, but fewer rounds in a fight. But for yourself, yeah. obviously you get a chance to maybe take your time a bit more in the ring, as it were. No, yeah, um, I mean, a lot of pros, they go to the pro game and the intensity of a fight sometimes drops. Um, and that's definitely not what I'm planning to do. Um, I've been known in the amateurs over three threes to be an absolute um, nutcase, to be fair, non-stop for the, every single minute of every round. Um, and I intend to keep that intensity up over the pros, pro uh, fights. Um, going into six and eight rounders, like I did a six rounder and, and after the six rounder, I felt I could go another six rounds. So my engine is going to be be really uh, shown in the pro game over these six and eight rounders and uh, going to cause some problems for a lot of fighters. How would you assess your transition from that amateur to professional style? Well, as an amateur, um, I had a, a pretty big uh, career in, in the amateurs. I had 90, 90 amateur fights, literally fought everyone and everyone. Um, even for my first season as an amateur, I was, I was fighting at the elite level. Um, fighting a lot more experienced lads and going into <clears throat> the pro game has probably been better for me and a lot of people have already said before I even turn pro that you've been more beneficial as a pro fighter than a, an amateur fighter and a bit more of a, a pro style to myself. So with that in mind uh, again you've just mentioned what, what you want to do in terms of going into six round and eight rounders for 2022 do you have an idea as to how many times you'd like to get out Any, anybody in particular you'd like to face? I mean, um, like I said, it doesn't matter to me who's in front of me. Uh, you could put, you could put someone who's a who's a middleweight in front of me, and I'll still look look to get in there and give them a good fight. But um, no, I look looking to build up 
the rounds, uh, hopefully get another six rounder in and then move on to the eights and get plenty of eight rounders and get plenty of experience. And then obviously going from eight rounders, that's again look, going to look at titles at the end of the year. So I'd like to be able to at least compete for an area title or even an English title. That was going to be my next question, Danny. Obviously, when do you envisage titles coming along in your career? Yeah, I mean, end of the year. I'm um, hoping by the end of the year I'll have had, what? I'll have had nine fights by then, hopefully. Fingers crossed, as long as I think goes, goes to plan. Um, so I think that's plenty of experience to be looking to maybe get into an area title fight or even if it's an English title eliminator or something along that line. Uh, end of the year, I'll be looking to sort of the time to look at, to push on it for some titles. You boxed at Villa Park three times previously, but then you made your debut uh, on a Mick Hennessy show uh, to what, in your last fight last year. Uh, how pleasing was that for yourself for the work that you've put into your career to finally make uh, your debut on a, a big time promoter's bill, as it were? With no disrespect, obviously, for previous shows you've boxed on. No, no, I mean, um, the Villa shows were brilliant there, nice and local. Um, massive ticket for this, so for me, it's a lot, a lot more beneficial. It's a slightly smaller show. So the crowd's a lot closer and they get to benefit the, from the atmosphere as, as much as anything. Um, but no, it was nice to finish the end of last year on a, a big show, on a Hennessy show. Again, that was really local for me. I'm only in Coventry, it's about 10 minutes down the road. Um, took it short notice, but there's no problem. I was, I was on fight fit ready anyway. Um, it's just a matter of selling some tickets and I still managed to sell a good whack of tickets. And um, I'm pretty sure they want me to get back on their next show that they're looking to put on. It's one thing you mentioned, you've got a loyal following as well and you're a good ticket seller. For somebody at such an early stage of your career, how vital do you think that is? Because for promoters looking to put shows on, especially around, say, as you mentioned, Coventry, Birmingham, just down the road from yourself, to be able to make you make yourself more of an attractive proposition because we know if it was to ask you, you can shift a fair amount of tickets. Yeah, um, I built my boxing fan base sort of as an amateur um, I'm an exciting fighter people want to go even if you didn't know me if you saw me fighting you'd be having a great time and you'd have a, it'd be a great watch um, it's non-stop from the first bout um, but yeah I can shift a lot of tickets out uh, I mean I'm looking at three, 400 probably um, and we're only we're only going to grow that fan base um, so as a promoter it's a win-win situation if you're going to get me on one of your shows you don't have to worry about my purse I'll cover that with, with my tickets so um I'm amazed that there's been no promoters come up um, just yet. Obviously, Hennessy's get me on some of his shows, which is great. Um, but they're going to get in nice and quick because obviously the longer it goes on and the more experience they have, the more they're going to have to pay to get me on some of their shows, isn't they? <laughs> um, right, Danny, just before I let you go, I'm leaving a final word to yourself ahead of what I anticipate will be a busy 2022 from you listening to you there. What would you like to say to you know, your fans, your sponsors, whoever it may be? Yeah, well, I'd just like to thank my sponsors. Obviously, it's a big year now being full-time. Um, I've got a handful of sponsors now who have really stepped up and really pushed it so that I can now go full-time, which is a massive, massive jump for me. Um, so, obviously, th thanks to Scott Simpson from Auto Fasteners, um, or at Fixed Autos, um, Keith Patstone, and uh, Wolves Bar Decorations, who have been the, the group behind pushing me this far. Um, I've got a lot of other sponsors like my strength and conditioning coaches, New Leaf, um, and it's quite nice to hear from them that they've only really dealt with about 10% of what, what, what my potential is. And going full time, you're going to see a massive, massive improvement, again, with my engine, but also my boxing ability, my strength, my power. Um, so hopefully might we might get a few little stoppages this year as well. Right, Danny, we'll leave it there then and I'll leave you to enjoy the rest of your day. I appreciate your time. Have a good one and I look forward to seeing your ring return soon. Thank you for speaking to me in Boxing Social. Yeah, thank you very much. Cheers, man.